What is exome sequencing? So, um, so exome sequencing is a new technology that simultaneously analyzes the protein coding regions or exons of nearly all 20,000 genes in the human genome. So in every cell in our body, we have three billion DNA letters and greater than 20,000 genes. And a problem in any place in there, even as small as a change of a single letter, could potentially cause problems with growth and development and functioning. So there's just this enormous amount of genetic information. So as you can imagine, it would be really difficult to go one by one, gene by gene. So what this technology does is it focuses on the parts of the genes that code for protein, which are the exons, because the majority of disease-causing mutations are located in those exons. So our exome is about one to two percent of the total DNA, but about 85 percent of disease mutations are there. So the analogy I use with families is that it's sort of like focusing on the part of the giant haystack where the needle is most likely to be. There's still a lot of hay that has to be sorted through, and it's possible that your needle is located somewhere else, but we have a higher chance of finding it. Exome sequencing is adding new genes, so it's rapidly expanding the number of genes that we know cause these disorders. It might double or triple or even quadruple the number of genes, but at the same time, then it allows us to, to more easily make these diagnoses quickly. I think it's, again, transforming the field in a way that probably um, neuroimaging trans transformed neurology you know, several decades ago. Before exome sequencing came out, many labs put out large next-gen sequencing panels, which was definitely a step above an improvement from going gene by gene, but still the, the, the diagnostic yield isn't as high because you're only looking at maybe a hundred out of a thousand possible genes. Where I personally think exome sequencing can be most useful are for disorders that are very genetically heterogeneous. So for example, neurodevelopmental disabilities, for intellectual disability, for autism, for seizures, for cerebral palsy-like conditions, where there's many possible genes, but there's not a lot of specific features to point you in one direction. By being able to substitute exome sequencing for some of these cases, instead of going through individually one gene at a time or a few genes at a time, you might be able to get an answer for a family um, within a few months as opposed to several years of, of going through and doing additional testing. For some conditions, uh, we, we go through a lot of invasive uh, diagnosis uh, testing. For example, muscular biopsies, uh, lumbar punctures, uh, staining of uh, uh, biopsies and some other procedures that are risky for our patients and that, that also cost uh, uh, tremendous amounts of, uh, of, of money for the patients and for our units and our hospitals. I think as, as whole exome sequencing gets cheaper, faster and more effective, it will help to reduce the time we spend on, on the diagnosis, the time we waste in, in, in giving treatments that are not appropriate, and it will also improve how we approach families. I've learned that in studying uh, rare diseases in detail, just the fact of seeing 100 patients versus 10 just puts you at a completely different level in terms of the ability to provide information to, to learn yourself what the wide variety of manifestations can be in this disorder, to try to start to understand what symptoms go along with what disorder, and to try to um, then enhance your, your ability to diagnose the next patient. The first time I heard of Ambry was actually when they became one of the first platforms to, to come on board commercially. Because at that time, we had um, just had a child die in the neonatal intensive care unit, and I had banked DNA under a research protocol, um, and the family was incredibly distraught. Uh, didn't, we didn't have a diagnosis in this child. This child was born um, and seemed to be a, a beautiful, perfectly normal child. There was not any dysmorphic features. He looked great, but we couldn't get him off the ventilator. And these parents were, were really struggling with, um, you know, what did their child have? Should they keep the child on the ventilator or not? What did this child's future prognosis hold? And um, Ambry had just uh, come about with uh, exome sequencing at that time, and we decided um, we knew how long it would take to, to still do this on a research basis, and we didn't have funds to do it in these individual cases. So we took a chance. We took a chance that we might get an answer, and we did. And that was incredible. When you find a novel mutation in a gene for the first time, you don't know that it's truly disease-causing. Ca I mean, we can actually look at um, uh, databases, and we can try to predict what it's going to do to the protein, et cetera. 
What was so wonderful about this particular case is that um, we were able to collaborate effectively within the University of Utah and with our Ambry colleagues. Um, and I asked my colleague, Josh Bonkowski, who does work in zebrafish, could he please try to look at the impact of, of what, what does this gene do when it's knocked down in zebrafish? There was a patient in the hospital who had this severe um, kind of disease affecting their ability to breathe and ability to move. And we um, worked with Dr. Butterfield and Dr. Svoboda on that case because um, the exome sequencing identified this gene, but it was a gene that no one had predicted before would be involved in causing a neuromuscular disease. And so our part of the analysis was that, okay, we need a relatively rapid and fast way to test, um, is this gene a reasonable candidate to cause this disease? And so we used a model vertebrate animal system called zebrafish to study what the effects of the disease were. And we found that in the zebrafish, this mutation basically gave the same disease that the, the human uh, was experiencing confirming the, the exome sequencing result. I think one of the also advantages is that if you don't get an answer, you have the raw data available and so you can come back to the lab, um, you can reach out to other specialists while we learn more about it. When you have more people with diagnoses, you can write publications up and um, write posters up and reach out to kind of say, well maybe there's only one case in this country, but maybe someone in Europe or somewhere else has also identified one or two and start to piece together what's really pathogenic and what really might not be pathogenic. I think it's important important as we're adding to the literature that we do so responsibly. Um, but being able to publish that or put things out there and have other scientists say we saw that too or no we don't, we, now we don't think this is that important in the pathway or whatever it may be. Um, but you can't really start to add to that information until you start seeing actual mutations or variants in those genes that we didn't know much about before. Whole exome sequencing give us more than one uh, genetic um, alteration or more than one variant, more than one mutation. So the benefit of performing whole exome sequencing and getting all the data, it can reveal a diagnosis, but it can also reveal all the variants that also help us uh, to direct what are the best treatments for patients. I think Ambry as a lab is very motivated to do this test and be one of the um, forefront people doing this test as well as to be able to do it responsibly um, and put a lot of thought into it, not only from the patient's perspective in terms of doing pre-authorizations and having contracts with insurance and having um, as quick of a turnaround time as possible, but also what do you do with that information because um, it's a lot of data being generated and um, it's a very important important process to be able to go through that responsibly. What really um, appealed to me about Ambry, number one, I used them because they were there first and I wanted to jump in right away with the commercial use of, of these tools. I think it's, it, it, you know, it was very frustrating to even wait while research was under development. We were all waiting for this for five or six years. So that was, that was wonderful. I also think that um, they have a very personalized approach and very careful approach to the phenotype which helps them to look at the variants that they find in a different way. There's lots of companies doing lots of work on software tools and um, ways to kind of look at the uh, data that you have from the patient's medical record. But um, it, it is challenging still to use that wisely and to use it efficiently and to get that job done. And I think that, that early on, uh, they really had a, a lot of, um, they really were ahead of the game in, in, in taking some of those careful steps that, that would help them rule out a number of variants that weren't disease causing and get down to the ones that were likely to be disease causing. Usually what the lab will do is they'll report variants that they think could possibly be related to the phenotype and then it's the clinician who makes the ultimate uh, determination of whether or not this variant is related to the phenotype. So that's why a partnership with the lab is good. It's so important to have genetic counselors at the laboratory. So um, I'm a little biased as a genetic counselor myself, but um, the counselors are so crucial just to be able to pick up the phone and call them or send an email um, and get a response right away is really important. Since we're all researchers, um, it, it wasn't just a clinician company relationship. They were really interested in, in the success of the project. It was very clear it wasn't just a business to them, that this was really a passion for them, that they want, they're excited about seeing uh, medicine move forward. And I also think that um, a lot of them have worked in various areas. Some of them are clinicians, some are scientists, some are bioinformaticists. They have a great team, and I really appreciate that personal approach.